for a long time in science and academia, consciousness was a taboo. It was not spoken about, not encouraged to research it, treated like a pseudoscience of sorts. Yes. Consciousness was this dirty word. So let's get really filthy on this episode. What is consciousness? Well, maybe, uh, I mean, good question, but maybe first we should talk about um, why it was a dirty word. Okay. So science is about objective reality, quote unquote. Yes. The idea is you have your beliefs, I have my beliefs, yeah. but science is about uh, testing what you believe is actually true. Yes. Yeah. So where, where let's say you don't believe me. Let's say you believe water boils at 200 degrees Celsius. And I believe it boils at 100 degrees Celsius. We can do an experiment that under these pressures, it boils at 100 degrees. If you make it a much higher pressure, it boils at 200 degrees. Yes. Yeah. But those are things that if we all agree what the assumptions are and what the measurement is and all that, we can come to some conclusions that then falsifies our initial beliefs. And that's how science progresses. Like I said, uh, initially you believe that the you know, world is the center of the universe or the center of the world, and then you can make an experiment and all of that. Yes? Yep. That's the whole point of science. But it, it, it relies on this idea that you have a third-person perspective that transcends your or my perspective, measurable. The problem of con con consciousness is that there's absolutely no way to, to do that. So for instance, if I say, hey, I don't believe you're conscious. Prove it to me. What could you do? Is there anything you could do to, to, to prove to me that you're conscious if I don't already believe you? That would depend on how you define consciousness, right? Well, let's get to that in a moment. But let's say I don't believe, I'd say I know I'm conscious and I don't believe you're conscious. I think you're a robot. To prove it that you passed the Turing test. <laughs> that, but again, uh, ChatGPT now passed the Turing test. Yeah, I would actually argue it might be conscious. Uh, we'll talk but, about that in yeah. a moment. But but so but so. Uh, How do I prove to you? Well, let's say. But one second, with the Turing test, right? A lot of people don't pass the Turing test. Yeah, but that's but also of, true. But a lot of AIs yeah. do, so that's not a valid test. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah, it's a probably an outdated test by outdated. this point. But I would say if I'm capable of emotion, well, sense of identity, love, suffering. But ChatGPT would say that that has. Yeah. It's a love, like, but how to believe you. But it's basically, I, I, I give it a benefit of doubt. Here's, here's how it works. I know I'm conscious. Yes. And I believe my consciousness derives from my brain. Mm -hmm. You have a brain, mm -hmm. presumably. <laughs> so, so. so, and we could probably check with, with an MRI <laughs> that you have one. And then say, you know what? You have a brain like I do. And you say you feel pain when I hurt you. Yeah. Let's say you're conscious. But I might be wrong about that. So in other words, uh, there is no way to tell that anything is conscious or not. You're limited by what I tell you and yes. I could, and I and could so, be faking it. So the reason this was a dirty word was not just a bias. It's a fundamental problem. Uh, consciousness is a first person quality. Like I know I'm conscious, but you cannot verify that. You have to just believe me. Yes. There's no scientific way to validate this. Right? Because you cannot measure it. Yes. So... So that, and that's where, that's when science ends basically. And so what science has been doing in the last 30 years, I would say, is establish these NCCs, they're the neural correlates of consciousness. It's called the easy problem of consciousness. <laughs> the idea is that let's say I monitor your brain waves while you are awake versus when you are asleep versus when you're anesthetized, when you're in a coma. And we now know, for instance, in that case, uh, what your brain activity looks like if you're awake. Then you have a lot of activity in the beta spectrum or in the gamma spectrum. Whereas if you, if I give you an anesthetic, pro propofol, for instance, uh, what, will, what will happen is that uh, alpha wave activity, which is usually in the back of the brain, posterior, will move frontal. So, so frontal and prefrontal alpha. And when that happens, you won't be here. So basically, if I ask you, hey, count backwards from 100 to zero. Once this alpha moves forward, you will stop talking and you will basically be not, not here. And, I'll, and, and later I'll ask you, hey, what happened? And you're like, I don't know, I wasn't here. So, so th those are all things that are easy, to easy, doable to establish, yes? Or I can say, I'm gonna show you a duck rabbit. Whenever you see a duck, push, a, push this button. When you see a rabbit, push this button, yes? And I can, in your, in a, in, and I record from your visual cortex while you do that. And I can then predict when you push this button, yes, this is what the brain activity looks like. And if you push this button, you really, really even do data science on this where like I predict you see this and you can impress somebody that, oh, wow, how, how could you tell? Like I can basically read your mind basically. You can, now that's doable, right? 
to a point where my I can even kind of decode your dreams. Yes, mm-hmm. like I record your brain activity where you slept. I have some data science model with this, some like base basis function model where I'm like, hey, I thought you were dreaming about planes. You're like, how did you know? Yes. So it's all doable. Yes. What is not doable, at least not right now, and maybe never, is this other what's called a hard problem. It's like, why do why do you have this subjective belief that you're something in the first place? Yes. Yeah. For instance, you woke up this morning, yes, and you are you. Well, why? There's no evolutionary or practical reason why you would need that, yes? Um, and why are you you and not me? And why is it always, speaking of, there's a watch on the, on the thing. Why is it always right now? Every time I watch, I look at my clock, it's right now, yes? Yes? It makes no sense. Where did the time go? And why is there? There's no reason to believe that anything but the current moment even exists. Everything else could be a memory that was implanted by us by the demiurge. Yes, <laughs> it's possible. You cannot, you cannot scientifically rule this out. So maybe the only thing that, that exists is the current moment, which is scientifically about three seconds. The subjective present is a saddle in time that lasts for about three seconds. Future doesn't exist, right? Might or might not happen. The past might or might not have happened. We agree it happened, but maybe just something implanted it or you imagined it. There's no, that, and that's where it stops. There's no way to go beyond that. And then that's where science ends. Mm-hmm. And I can say, I, I believe you that the past probably happened. And I made all these decisions that led me here. And you made all the decisions that you here. And our ancestors made all these decisions that led us both here. But do we know that for sure? I mean, we don't know. We have to believe that our instruments are accurate and all of that. So basically this deep problem of consciousness is very deep. Uh, all that really exists is the current subjective experience of reality for you and for me.